Hey folks, I am Dhruva Jyoti from the Community Engine team at Harness. In this video, we are going to talk about Harness CI and build a simple Go pipeline from scratch on Harness Cloud, a new, fast and fully managed CI solution. With this, you can start building your code right away on infrastructure provided to you by Harness and not spend any time and effort on maintaining your own build from infrastructure, which in turn will allow you to focus more on developing great software. So what is Harness CI? Harness CI simplifies the development and testing of code in Harness Pipeline. You visually model your build and test processes as CI stages. Each stage includes steps for building, testing, and pushing your code. It executes steps as containers, packaging code and dependencies in isolation from other steps. You simply specify a container to use, and Harness locates and launches the container in which the job will run. So what do you need to get started? First of all, what you'll require is an Harness account, which is will be hosted in app.harness.io. We'll require a GitHub account, which will act like a source code manager for you. And last, we'll require a Docker Hub account, which will act as a Docker registry for you. And that's it. That's what you need to build your very first pipeline with Harness. So let's get started. So as a first, so as a part of the first step, we are going to fork the repository that is a Go pipeline sample, which is present under the Harness community. The link to the repository will be provided in the description box. I'll directly jump into the Harness UI and create a new sample account and get started with building your first pipeline for the Go application. So let's get started. So I'll directly jump into app.harness.io and sign up for a new account. If you can see here in the bottom left corner, we have the sign up option. I'll click on that. In the sign up page, we have different options to sign up. Like you can go with Google or GitHub, but in this case, I'll just choose to go with my email address. Now I'll be using a demo email address. You can choose your own email address or also you can choose the other sign up options that are available. Make sure you give a valid password and then click on sign up. Now, as soon as you click on sign up, it will send you a verification mail in your email address and you'll have to click on the verification link to verify your account. And yeah, so we are verifying our email address and uh, email verified successfully. Amazing. So this will redirect me back to the app, Harness app homepage and uh, so as you can see, we have different modules here. I'll go ahead with CI and click on continue. Um, now in this page, we can learn more about the CI module of uh, Harness. Like we can run through the documentation as, as well a bit, understand what are the different features and uh, how do we implement them. But I'll just go and click on get started now. Amazing. So now we'll choose our source code manager. So we have GitLab, Bitbucket and Get so GitHub as our options. So I'll go ahead with GitHub and Authentication, I uh, will go ahead with auth, right? And I'll be using my GitHub account credentials. So let me just use them. Amazing. So let's click on sign in and uh, I'll verify my GitHub account. Uh, now, this is a best practice to save uh, if you have enabled two, two factor authentication for a GitHub account, it will uh, ask you to verify your uh, authentication. And amazing. Um, so we have verified it continue and yeah the connection is successful amazing so we'll move ahead and select our repository in the next step so it will automatically fetch all the repositories from my github account now uh, but in this case we'll be using the go application sample uh, that we have already forked from harness community so this is a particular repository go pipeline sample and i'll say configure pipeline now we have different starter configurations available uh, but i'll go ahead and uh, you know, move ahead with starter pipeline itself and click on create pipeline it will take few seconds and that's it um, our default pipeline configuration is uh, you know available in our pipeline studio so if i move back and see the infrastructure uh, right now uh, it is hosted builds and the operating system is linux and the architecture that we are using is am64 and in the execution we have a run step which displays nothing but a welcome message that is equal welcome to our ci amazing so let's run this uh, once and check out how uh, the successful run looks like. So I'll just go ahead and click on run and yeah. Amazing. So it automatically fetches my branch as well and I'll click on run pipeline. And as you can see, uh, the execution has started. We have two different execution panels. One is visual and another is console view. Uh, so let me just uh, jump into the console view. Amazing. So as you can see the Build is currently live and it's running.
and that's it my execution is successful amazing so let me just jump in back to the pipeline studio and configure my pipeline with respect to the go application so i'll change this run step to run some unit tests so let's give it a name say run unit tests amazing now i'll auto populate this command line with the unit test commands of my go application so let me just copy paste them and in the option configuration i'll choose my container registry so in this case i'll move ahead with the runtime input uh, for my container registry uh, so I'll be auto populating these values during my runtime execution of my pipeline. Uh, in the image, I'll choose Golang image. So let me just go and paste them. Um, so I'll store this test results in a report path. So I'll just define that as well. And yeah, good to go. Let's click on apply changes. The next step, I'll define uh, a run step again to build my Go application. So let me just go and do that. So let's say build app. Uh, this is the name of the run step and again I'll auto populate the values for my uh, building process for my application uh, in the optional configuration once again I'll define the container registry as a runtime input and I'll be using the same image that I was using in the previous step that's a golang image so let me just go and paste that as well amazing so I'll click on apply changes and yeah uh, the last step will define uh, the building and pushing of image to the docker hub registry now we have different registries available and different steps available for the same but in this case we'll move ahead with the build and push to docker hub registry step let's give it a name uh, let's say build and push image to docker hub works fine so as you can see there is an, another uh, parameter docker connector i'll choose this as a runtime input as well and the repository of docker as also a runtime input now tags i'll be using it as a latest by default and uh, we'll click on apply changes yeah good to go so i'll verify my code base configuration once again and yeah that's verified I apply changes and i'll click on save amazing so let's run the pipeline and see how the execution looks like so i'll click on run and uh, it automatically fetches the main branch for me uh, in a container registry i can select a new connector right so I'll just go and click on new connector. I'll say Docker registry. Um, and uh, let's give it a name, say Docker connector. Amazing. I'll go and click on continue. Um, there are other necessary information available in the site panel as well, which you can refer to while creating the Docker connector. Um, here I'll define the Docker registry URL and my username, the Docker hub registry username that I have for my profile. So let me just go ahead and write that down and then i'll be generating a personal access token and saving it as a secret in harness so i've already generated one i'll be using the same so let me just go ahead and create a secret for that so i'll click on it and let's say new secret text let's give it a name say docker path and i'll copy paste my secret value and save amazing so I'll click, click on continue. In this case, we'll go ahead with continue uh, connect through harness platform because we are using hosted builds and the connection test uh, verification is successful. Amazing. So let's click on finish. Amazing. Uh, I'll be using the same Docker connector for all the other runtime inputs that I have defined. So let me just go and do that. And uh, I've already created the image. Uh, that's the Docker Hub registry repository, right? Uh, so I'll just go and paste that here as well. Uh, that's test go, right? So skip the flag uh, check and we'll run our packet. Amazing. So as you can see, my pipeline execution is live right now. Now, while the execution is live, I can also go and edit my pipeline and uh, uh, have concurrent runs for the same pipeline. But uh, if you remember, we are running some unit tests, right? Um, in the run step for our, uh, for our pipeline. So I can also uh, trace those test results while my execution is live. So um, let's wait for uh, the run step where we are running the uh, unit tests, right? So as you can see, we are running the unit test right now. Now if I move to the test section, I can actually track down uh, the test results while the execution is live. So as you can see, we have one failed test, right? The total number of tests that we are running are four. So yeah, that is again uh, how you can track down your test results. Now you can uh, edit your pipeline, as I mentioned, uh, while the execution is live, you can also check the live concurrent builds that you are having for different pipelines. And uh, in the execution history, we can track down the previous execution history for uh, the same pipeline that you are running, right? Amazing.
also let's say if you have to automate your uh, pipeline execution you can directly use triggers now harness automatically creates triggers for you for github event that is pull request and push but you can also create uh, different triggers for you and for different instances now as you can see my pipeline execution is successful uh, amazing so let's verify this by moving to the docker hub registry so this is the same uh, repository that we were using in the pipeline and as you can see in the tags uh, the latest tag has been pushed just a minute back right amazing now another important thing to cover here is that if you remember uh, in our execution we are using not uh, know, quite a bit of run time inputs for most of our parameters right so uh, it becomes a manual labor sometimes to uh, you know use so many runtime inputs every single time of execution so what we can do is we can define them once like i'm defining it right now and once i've defined the default values i can choose this option of saving it as a new input set right so let's save it as a new input set and let's give it a name say input set 2 right um, amazing so let's save it and the next time i uh, try to execute my pipeline i'll be automatically uh, you know using the same input set to uh, you know run my pipeline manually right so this is an amazing feature let's me show you again once again so if i click on run right now i can click on use existing input sets and i can just click on input set to apply inputs and it automatically auto, auto populates the values for me right so yeah that's it for this video thank you so much for joining us if you have any queries make sure you join the slack channel and server of Harness community and share your query with us. Thank you so much.